array, an array of microphones to choose from. Bonjour. Ah, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> then <Merci>. you. <laughs> nah, well, first of all, uh, so thrilled to be in Lille and to be in Sears Mania. Uh, the, the, the love and appreciation of the art of the series is uh, here in full force. So we're, we're really thrilled to be here and be part of it. Um, so I'm and super thrilled to be here with Charlie and Annabelle. Uh, we've created one of the great global brands on Netflix, uh, Black Mirror, and, um, and taking from just doing a series to, I say just, uh, <laughs> to really uh, taking a crack at inventing a form uh, in the form of Bandersnatch. And Bandersnatch, you talked about as a Rubik's Cube, and you've talked about it adding new dimensions to storytelling. Can you talk a bit about that with us? Oh, well, it was, it, 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 was a, it was quite a challenge. I, I remember when we first, uh, it, it was uh, Todd uh, at Netflix who first suggested, Todd and Carla suggested to yeah. us, um, that we do an interactive episode, and Annabelle and I sat in a meeting room, uh, nodding and smiling, and we both thought, we said, that's interesting, and we, we, we left going, there's no way we're going to do that. that looks, Absolutely no way. Looks yeah. way <laughs> too complicated. And then, um, annoyingly, uh, a few weeks later, we were, we were talking about episode ideas, and we had a story idea that only really worked as an interactive um, story, so we had to ring Todd back up and go, Okay, we've got one now. Meaning that you could, you don't think you could have told that story uh, as, as effectively without the interactive piece. Exactly. The, 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 there was a central part of the story which involved um, somebody becoming aware that they were being controlled by you, the viewer, and so it only really, it only really functioned as, as an interactive. And, and then to sit down and try and, it was something which there was no real blueprint for, so we had to. Uh, even coming up with the story outline, I had to learn Twine, which is a coding language. It's the only time a story outline has crashed, um, in my experience. No, um, other stories you've done have crashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but you know what I mean. In a, um, it, it, so it was, it, was, it was a very interesting experience in that it was, um, it was a real headache for me early on, and then that headache spread out amongst the rest of the whole team as, as, it, as, as we were realizing it. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, Netflix had done interactive stories in the kids' space, with children, in animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this was the first time that there had been a live-action interactive film for adults you know, on a streaming platform. So we knew it was high risk and high profile, but we had confidence in the idea. It was just the execution yeah. that we hadn't realized was going to be so difficult. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and for the benefit of the fans, how, first of all, how many have got a chance to watch or interact with Bandersnatch on Netflix? Oh, great. Awesome. Oh, okay. That's a good... Two. So, two. <laughs> For the benefit of everyone behind row one. Two. I was really uh, worried when you asked that in case. It was just one, <laughs> one angry-looking person. Lift your left hand for so yes, the right hand for no. For the benefit of, the, of those folks, um, how, ma how, ma how many hours went into... There is a... It's about f the shortest path through the show is 40 minutes or so. How much programming has to go behind that? Um... Yes, I think you're right. It's about the, the shortest ending is probably about 40 minutes, 50 minutes. Um, there's actually, there's five and a half hours of footage on there. I think there's probably two to three hours of sort of unique footage, I would say. There's even a chunk in there that you can't get to because we changed something. So there's a little section in the middle that <laughs> will never actually appear. Be seen. <laughs> yeah. And so I was saying we should have just dubbed like... Uh, the Beatles onto it, because then we'd have had a great like, piece of music that we didn't have to pay for. Right. <laughs> no one would ever, it would be the ultimate Easter egg. Yeah. Do, do you have any sense why, the, why it was so popular? I mean, including in France was huge, but it's played really well all over the world. Uh, I think the fact that it's unique obviously has intrigued people, but I like to think that um, the fact that the film functioned uh, first and foremost as a film, so that people engaged with the protagonist, Stefan, and cared about the story, um, meant that people, yeah, that they stayed with it and, and enjoyed it and wanted to pursue all the other endings. So there's no point having, you know, lots of 
different endings if people actually don't care and they become arbitrary. Right. So we tried to make it feel like a cohesive world and that every ending built and you understood more about the character as a result so that all the endings could coexist. Um, so you, you didn't feel that, that it was um, yeah, arbitrary and meaningless. I, I would just add to that that um, something that was very important to us from the start was that it, this sounds trite, but that it worked um, and, and that it worked as seamlessly as possible. And, and as we were, as, so the, the, the product team were constantly working on all of that throughout, while we were, while we were creating the script and, and working out how that worked, they were constantly finessing the technology behind it. And whenever we said, is this possible? We've had an idea, is this possible? They never said no. They always said, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can make that work. And nine times out of 10, they would make it work. At the, at the, when we finally saw a sort of prototype of it actually on the Netflix platform, I remember I was in a, we were shooting in South Africa. I was in a hotel room. I had a, like a, 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 a Roku stick plugged into a TV on hotel Wi-Fi. And I thought this is going to be stuttery. It's not going to work. Yeah. And it worked seamlessly. And I nearly cried. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's because it part, uh, that's part of it. It's a seamless experience. Yeah. So this is not a, a spoiler, um, but there are five different endings. Uh, none of them very happy. Uh, <laughs> is it is it, Black Mirror, what you were expecting. That is true, that is true. Is, is that uh, a commentary on, <laughs> on the fan, on the commentary on us, or...? Uh... Uh, you see, I think, I think some of the endings... Well, I mean, A, it, it, first of all, it depends on uh, how much you, you want to chop someone up in a bathtub, is depending on <laughs> whether, what you consider a happy ending. Um, but uh, some of the endings are quite comic, I would say, so, that, so we do definitely do lighter endings. It was interesting that people, uh, people come to it with slightly different expectations, so some people, I think, felt that they wanted Stefan, the main character, they, some people came away going, oh, I really wanted a happy ending for him, I wanted right. everything to work out great, which might not be that dramatically interesting, I, th I think. And I, I wonder if that's because there, were, there was a slight gaming sensibility coming to it and people wanting to complete it and feel like they'd got 100%. I don't know if it, I don't think it's from a completist point of view. I think it's because the interactivity gave viewers another level of complicity. They meant that they, it wasn't a passive viewing. You know, they lent in, they were engaged, they felt involved and they felt responsible. And so they were desperately trying to navigate him to a safe place. I mean, there's one, as uh, he ends, you know, he is reunited with his mum on a train and the train crashes and they die, and they but die. okay, that's, that's, that's not That's quite happy. a spoiler, that. And that's the oh, happy yeah. end, oh, but sorry. that's the happy one. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the happy ones. It wasn't raining, it was a nice day <laughs> yes, out. Yes. Yeah. Um, Could you, I'm just thinking, you, and you were talking earlier about the, if you happen to uh, watch it on a game platform, mm -hmm. you were holding the remote control in your hand. Oh, yeah. And it would vibrate when it was time to yeah. make a choice. And and uh, many people don't realize how much work went into... Uh, oh, yeah. We were giving feedback on... So I was trying it out on, like, the Xbox One and the PlayStation while we were, right. uh, we were looking at these different builds. And, um, and, and I was like, well, can it vibrate when you get to a choice point? And then, we, then, and then they, they sent that, and it was a bit too... It was too much. Um, it was too uh, strong. And so I sort of gave feedback going, well, play this... Play Forza Horizon 4, and it should feel like when you drive over gravel, and they tweaked it. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, so when you get to a bit like when you're going to murder somebody, can we make the vibration stronger? Um, and so we could, so you realize there's an extra tool in your box as a storyteller that you can, and so people aren't going to, I don't think people, maybe, maybe they, they think that it's, it's stronger, they think it's in their head, but it is actually... Yeah, it's, it's quite subtle, reacting, but I think yeah. people, and everyone thought it was them thinking of us, oh my, I was more startled at that end, and they actually were more startled. Mm. By the way, I was thinking how difficult it must be for the folks who are thinking about writing their first uh, television script, um, just thinking about how, okay, now I have to think about all of that too. <laughs> <laughs> Although the fun, it's sort of fun. I mean, sometimes when people say that... I think sometimes people sort of say Black Mirror is anti-technology, and it really isn't. Like, we, we, like, I'm very, very geeky and dweeby, and I love all that stuff. You couldn't do this show if you didn't love... I loved the yeah. idea of being able to tweak the vibration settings on a PlayStation while writing a script. And that's <laughs> consistent through all the Black Mirror episodes yeah. and installments. The, the, it is rooted in the kind of love, love of the technology, yeah. too, right? It has to be. 
Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to be seduced by technology to welcome it into your world and then explore what the possible pitfalls could be. And that's what I think Black Mirror is. It's sort mm -hmm. of sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's us examining our relationship with the technology that's changing so quickly and uh, a sort of uh, things that we're not even aware that we are about to be concerned about. You know, that, I think that's our job. Yeah. So we've done uh, interactive for kids and we've done interactive for very, uh, very much in the adult form in, in, in uh, Black Mirror in Bandersnatch. What do you think uh, that this form of storytelling lends itself to next? Uh, romance, comedy, how do you think it? The news? <laughs> the news. <laughs> choose your own ending. Can you news. sort out Brexit? Yeah, we'll do, that would be good. we'll do a Brexit special. <laughs> you can choose which unhappy five endings you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the perfect that, that that might that might be the one thing that sorts it out. Um, uh, okay. okay. I, it's, it's you imagine by the way the vibration would have to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly feel like that watching the news at yeah. the moment. Um, it's our turn now. Yes, you're uh, it's our turn to me. ask some questions. So we're gonna we're gonna bandersnatch you. That's a term I think we've. We've just, invented. Invented. We've just invented. <laughs> uh, we're going to throw some questions at you in an, in an yeah. interactive, binary sort of way. So, uh, your choice. I'll start with an easy one. Yes. Frosties or sugar puffs? Mm. I'm going to say sugar puffs. Yes. Sugar puffs are, I don't know if you've ever eaten them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. They taste, they, they have the texture of those polystyrene packing chips. You yes. Get in a, that's why I like exactly. them. You, just, you can leave the milk in all day. It's still fine. Yeah. Okay, slightly more difficult one. Uh, France or Britain? <laughs> well, I, I still have to get home tonight, so France, of course. Uh, I'll go with that at the moment, looking at the way Britain's going. <laughs> can I stay? <laughs> um, no one said yes. <laughs> um, technology or entertainment? Well, um, Entertainment. I mean, that's what we do. Is to we hopefully bring try to bring joy to people all over the world with our shows and our series and our films. Uh, and um, and I don't. I think the the real beauty of something that, that you guys have taken it to a new extreme level with interactive storytelling on Bandersnatch is entertainment that's rooted with technology that helps people access it um, is a big plus. Um, the idea that the, the real, people always ask me what works on Netflix, what works on Netflix, and I said the same thing that works everywhere, a good story well told. And that the technology bit is how do we um, get over language barriers and access the content and remember what episode you were on and all those things that take away from the experience of watching a great show. Uh, and at the end of the day though, it's, it's entertainment. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't think Black Mirror would have been as big a success as it is if we weren't on Netflix. I think it's that access, it's that sort of place where shows are allowed to uh, be found and to grow and to find their audience over time. Yeah. Um, you know, Black Mirror, I think, is very much a word of mouth show. It's very hard to pitch it, it's very hard to describe. And so you need that, you need a personal recommendation. You mm. need someone saying, you have to go and see the show. And, you know, on a streaming platform, you can find it at any point. And I found it's one of these things like uh, when something is a, a, gets popular enough and there's a meme, go, there's memes going around the internet on it, uh, sometimes on the very device that you're looking at the meme, you can just watch what everyone's yeah. talking about versus remembering what's that show, who was in it, what time's it on, where's it at, and so, yeah. We found that, I mean, I think being, being an anthology show, it's been interesting because um, it, it, we, I think anthology shows are very much suited to a, to a streaming platform because you don't, we don't have, we don't have cliffhangers week to week. We don't right. have a continuing cast. So, so it, it's, I, I liken it to a, you can tell somebody about this show that you saw and you can't quite believe. And it's like, they've got this magic cupboard in their house, which all this stuff is in and they could just sort of pull it out and, and look at it whenever they want. And we noticed that or we were told that in between our first season going up on, on Netflix and the second one, people had got used to the idea that was, this was an anthology and they were, they were tackling the episodes in whatever order they wanted, right. which um, so that that was extremely gratifying. And again, that wouldn't that, you wouldn't be able to do that in a traditional. And you hope, unfortunately, for the guys who do so much work on the uh, on the technology itself, mm -hmm. that the best kind of technology kind of disappears and yeah. falls into the background, and, and you, you you don't really no, you notice the lack of it, but you don't really notice that it's yeah. There. Yeah. 
So following on from that, tradition or disruption? Hmm. So I, I'm not a fan of the word disruption just because it has such negative I, connotations. I apologize. It's, no, well, it just is, I mean, I, it gets hung on my head a lot, but I feel like it's a, um, it's more like, you know, burning things down and seeing what happens, and that, that's not really what we're up to. And it's um, the tradition and disruption is like, I feel like if you're going to, I feel like what we're trying to do is uh, preserve and improve on the formats and improve and, uh, and grow on grow storytelling. And um, to do that, I think you have to be pretty deeply rooted in the traditions and have some, some amount of reverence for what they are because I think they've, you have to realize when you go into something like this that um, studios have been making films and series for 100 years and, and uh, certain things work, certain things work great and they certainly, the connection with people um, is rooted in tradition and we don't want to ever lose those things that are the most valuable part of storytelling. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it is that simplistic in a way. If the idea is not good and it's not executed in a, you know, in a, in a yeah. engaging way, no yeah. one will come. It's a disruption often is for disruption's sake, and we never want to do that. That's what we... Yeah. We sometimes depict that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in Black Mirror. Yeah. Um, uh, film or series? Hmm. So you, uh, you refer to Bandersnatch as a film many times. Um, I think uh, Callister was certainly received in the, in the world as a film. Um, I think they're, um, they're distinctly different art forms, but they tend to be uh, increasingly consumed sim in similar ways with people, and they don't make the distinction between a really great series that to them may be like a 13-hour film, uh, uh, and uh, certainly uh, watching a couple of hours of a series could also be like watching a movie to them. Yeah. And, the, and the, the creative form is becoming more and more uh, cinema is infused into television in ways that we've never seen before. So um, I lo I, I'm pleased that I don't have to choose between the two, uh, and I'm a big lover of both, so I punt on that one. Whenever we, whenever we uh, meet up with um, oh, the Netflix commissioners and we're talking about an idea, um, it always amazes me that the, the form is open. So the response we get is, well, if you think it feels like a yeah. one-off film, pursue that. But if you think you actually have more story that you want to tell over a longer period, do a mini-series. And we're going, oh, okay. And slightly um, overwhelmed by the freedom that we're given. Yeah. You know, uh, there was a mini-series we did last year called Godless. Um, that did um, quite well for us all over the world and won a bunch of Emmys and uh, it came to us originally as a film. Uh, it was pitched to us as a, as a script for a feature film. At the time we were uh, not that involved in making movies yet and it's a, it was a big big western and, yeah. we, and we have not seen one of those in a long time and Scott Frank wrote this brilliant script and we called him back in and it's like you know I think that uh, we're not, we're not, we can't make this as a film, but we think there's a lot more story here that it could be expanded out into something more like closer to a miniseries. And he said, oh, well, perfect, I, I took 150 pages out. And he goes, I'll, <laughs> I'll go back and put them, and he took about six months of putting them back in, uh, and it turned out to be about a seven and a half hour miniseries that started out as a feature film. So it's a, the very dis different and distinct art forms, mm -hmm. but can certainly borrow from each other very uh, yeah. aggressively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, so we're sometimes asked, uh, would you be interested in doing a Black Mirror movie? And we sort of think, well, we kind of feel like we, we do that all the time anyway, yeah. in a way, because we treat each one like a, like, a, like a movie. It's sort of each one is uh, independent, and that's certainly how we, we, we think about them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, Ted, you've talked about change and about risk. Um, obviously, your first original, House of Cards, cost something crazy like 100 100 million dollars, <laughs> something like that, something wasn't it? Something like that. Um, but, and you commissioned it on the spot without a pilot. So yeah. could you talk to us about your attitude towards risk in terms of dollars and storytelling? Well, it, yes, it was a big swing out of the gate. And I, people I often talk about it as to why we would have done that. And, and uh, at the time, we had never, Netflix had never made an original anything. Yeah. We'd never created a content brand. We've never, I mean, we basically, we were a place where... Uh, shows that had been on before ran and movies that had been in other places before ran. So when we got the opportunity to do House of Cards, um, it's, th it's thought of as a big risk because we had never done it and $100 million at the time was a lot of money and it was two seasons without a pilot, which was also a pretty unheard of thing that's become almost the standard yeah, yeah. course of doing business anymore in Hollywood. Yeah. 
uh, but at the, but I think about it as how like that was a we had three very shootable scripts from an Oscar nominated writer. I mean literally not Oscar nominated at the time that they pitched the the script to us. Um, we had an incredible cast that was attached. David Fincher was attached to direct the pilot. Um, it, fa it actually, in, in many ways, it was the least risky thing we've ever done. It was so packaged and, and it was almost uh, just add water. But it was, quite, uh, comp it was quite competitive at the time and there was no reason for them to do it at Netflix, which is why I went to them and said, um, there's a thousand reasons not to do this here, but here's one good one to do it here. Uh, 26 episodes, no pilot, no notes. <laughs> And it sounds the, irresponsible. It sounds irresponsible. <laughs> it sounds irresponsible. But it was, like I said. But the, you know, the the caveat was, David had to have his name on every episode. <laughs> so, okay. and that the the bet was is that we, if you pick the right storytellers and the right worlds, and give them all the tools they need to do the work of their life and kind of get out of their way, that uh, it will pay off for you, for you pretty well. So in many ways, why it was a big swing. Uh, we have done, there are other things that feel much riskier, and I think you, as a commissioner, you need to be, have a pretty good appetite for risk. You need to be willing to step into that thing that hasn't been done before, uh, because of the opportunity, because what the things that can come out of that are magic. Uh, and sometimes they require a big financial risk or betting on a new storyteller, a new voice, uh, because you believe that this is a story that they can't live without telling. So. Um, you, you, you mentioned French film earlier, and we've talked a lot about Bandersnatch and ourselves and Brexit and Britain. Um, what, what, but we're in France. What, what, yeah. what other French material can, uh, is coming up? Well, we're really I mean, obviously, we're thrilled to be here, uh, and we're expanding right now. Our, um, throughout, all, the, all throughout Europe, we're investing a billion dollars of original and original films and television in Europe. Uh, including 15 original projects in France that are in various states of production and uh, right now. Um, and what we find is is that we are uh, working with some of the great storytellers on the planet and have in a, in a way that they can tell stories and forms that they haven't in the past uh, and to have the kind of creative freedom that you talked about uh, to bring their, sh their show to the world. And I, it's never been our initiative to export Hollywood to the world. That's never what we stepped into this for. Our goal was always to find the great storytelling from, from anywhere in the world to the rest of the world. Uh, and in a country like France that has got such incredible tradition of, of cinema and television, uh, we knew it's a high bar to, to continue to tell great stories from France for the world. And our ability then to have something launch, uh, Plan Corps was uh, uh, the hookup plan that we did in France that um, there was all this, tr there's a lot of conventional wisdom in television. What does and doesn't travel. Uh, in almost every case, it all turns out to be untrue. Uh, and Plank Corps was a huge hit for us all over the world and people watched it and uh, are dying for the new season. We announced the second season upcoming. Uh, but we also have a lot of new, con new shows coming up like Vampires and Family Business. Uh, these are um, series that are um, from, new in many cases, first time showrunners, in many cases, very well established showrunners. Uh, but working in new form, and we're really just thrilled. We're opening an office in Paris finally, so we'll have uh, people here too to oversee that uh, and a, an expanding slate of films and television from France for for the world on Netflix. Wow, mm, I'm I, I'm excited. About, I like watching I like watching like uh, uh, what I call foreign shows uh, with the subtitles on because it means I can't check my phone. Yeah, it takes uh, yes. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I like I, yeah. I pay much more attention, I think, to the story <laughs> often because I can't. I'm 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 wrapped with attention. You know, what I really love is that when uh, when something you really love a show and you're really into it, you kind of forget if it was yeah. what language it was in. In many cases, and I've had so many people who are big fans of Narcos yeah. argue with me that it's not in Spanish. I go, no, no, we made it. It's in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you watched it with subtitles, and they they completely get lost in the story, which yeah. is. Exactly, That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So are we, are we switching back? I think, I it's, think, I are, think it's your turn to grill us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, tell, tell, can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Um, you, you are someone who has worked uh, in traditional broadcast and on Netflix both. Uh, you're in the rare position of being able to talk about what are the, the differences? Um, 
I wish I could say it was a harrowing experience. Uh, but it, it is hard. Mm. It is hard to talk about Netflix without sounding sycophantic, um, because we have or like a, a uh, member of a cult. Yes. <laughs> the way I talk about Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, it is a. You have. To, it's very interesting um, in that you feel as if you are working with someone on your production because someone who's well aware of the time restrictions, someone who's well aware of the need for a decision, or someone who wants to get things made as much as you do. So you feel as if you're part of the team, because the, the, the speed with which Netflix respond, whether it's on budgetary matters, or casting, or notes, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. They, all, they, they feel very much part of the team. Um, and um, I, it's... It, yeah, it's it's a, it's been a really good experience. I would um, say that I, I mean I was quite good. The first the first script I wrote that was for Netflix was San Junipero, and uh, we we gave it over, and and the, the feedback came back that was just we love it. It was <laughs> that was sort of the uh, and generally when we do get notes and feedback, it's always. Um, well considered. It's always sort of thoughtful and well considered and smart. And so even if it's a note that you don't entirely agree with, it's you know it's come from a good place and it's never prescriptive as well. So it's never like you must do this. It's always a, 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 su a, a suggestion and an interested suggestion from, a, from an interested party who's just who's keen to sort of just yeah. make the story work as, as well as possible. Yeah. Well, um, well, unfortunately, unlike Netflix, they were, they were on a very rigid time frame oh. here, and we have just magically burned through 30 minutes, so we, were we have to wrap it up. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming, and thank you so much for doing this with us. And Thank you. Thank you, Series thank you. Mania, for having us. Cheers.